I'm not sure what's in the water in West Virginia, but it can't be good because things are getting pretty weird in that state lately. And I have to say, as an outsider, I'm very concerned. Now, I say this specifically about their political situation because it is seemingly more bizarre than it usually is, especially when it comes to their governor race on the GOP side. So as I understand it, there's six prominent candidates running for their gubernatorial GOP nomination. And of those six, there are three main contenders, according to polls. And that includes Moore Capito, who is the demon offspring of U.S. Senator Shelley Moore Capito. There's Chris Miller, business person and mask villain lookalike. And last but not least, there's Attorney General Patrick Morrissey, who has a pretty sizable lead. And I'll keep it real. I wasn't necessarily expecting Republicans in West Virginia to nominate someone normal per se, but it really does seem like they're scraping the bottom of the barrel with these three dipshits because they're all currently locked in a race to the bottom to be as transphobic as possible. And as a result, they've managed to produce some of the most bizarre, stupid political ads I think I've ever seen, which says a lot because I've been doing this for a while. Now, I say this because you could convince me that these are actual parodies if you just show them to me and you didn't give me the context like it's a bad snl skit right so let's get to them matthew klein of cook politico report put together a thread of all these ads that these guys are running which i'll link to down below and i want to start with the first attack ad on chris miller that's this guy mask look like and uh mask villain look like specifically uh and he's being attacked by a pack supporting patrick morrissey who's the attorney general and before i show you this i just want to reiterate this is real. This is not satire. But without further ado, let's watch. He, him, she, her, they, them. When Chris Miller was a board member at an in-state university, he looked the other way as pro-transgender events happened on his watch. Drag shows, a transgender homecoming gala, and even, quote, a trans closet that provided items to support sex changes for students. Chris Miller protected they, them, not us. Black Bear Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. He protected they slash them, not us. <laughs> I just, wow. I wonder if he knows that as the governor, you're going to have non-binary constituents and you represent them too. They don't want to acknowledge that. Now, what I love the most about this ad is that the crux of it stems from this idea that LGBTQ people existed on campus and that was bad specifically for Chris Miller because he was a board member and he did nothing. I mean, I just, I guess I don't understand What's the expectation, right? What do you want him to do? Shut down LGBTQ plus events because they would exist if he weren't the fucking board member. So why exactly does this say anything about him? The implication is that, you know, he's LGBTQ plus friendly when in actuality, as you're going to find out, he's not. But Morrissey's team or super PAC, which they're definitely not coordinating with, thinks that they can, I guess, drive down support for Miller if they portray him as pro-LGBTQ+. And there's so many questions about this ad because it's so stupid. But mostly, I want to know about this trans closet that supposedly performed sex change surgeries on students. I think they said they provided items to handle sex change surgeries. There's a lot to ask about this because... How does that work? I mean, are they performing gender-affirming surgeries in the closet? Because if that's the case, that's just impressive. Now, it might not be the most sterile, but I'm no expert. But I mean, I want to know more about that because it sounds so outlandish that it almost makes me wonder if it's bullshit. Hmm. Now, next one. So a pack supporting Chris Miller flipped the script on Morrissey and put out the uh, following ad and said, actually, no, you. You're the one who's pro-LGBTQ, and they even managed to get in a dig at his weight. How low would you go to make a buck? As a lobbyist, Patrick Morrissey helped a leading provider of child sex change procedures, lobbying the government to pay them with seniors' Medicare. Morrissey even lobbied for a drug company that helps turn boys into girls. Morrissey is small in stature, but has a big appetite for getting rich at our expense. Paid for by West Virginia Forward, not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. He has a big appetite for getting rich at our expense. Get it? Because he's overweight. Brilliant. Had to throw that in there. But I also want to know more about this ad, specifically the lobbying that he allegedly did on behalf of big trans, because I guess that 
he, in his job as a lobbyist, tried to make sure that more kids were be able to have uh, would be able to have sex change procedures at the expense of government. So we're talking about socialism for trans kids that this GOP AG supposedly lobbied for. Hmm, that seems a little bit weird, right? Now, obviously, I, like I feel like I shouldn't have to say this at this point, but bottom surgeries are not performed on anyone under the age of 18. And this ad not only lies about that, but it takes the lie to such outrageous lengths that I don't know that even GOP voters are going to fall for it because it's pretending as if Morrissey lobbied on behalf of big trans, specifically to take away Medicare money from old people in order to trans the kids. So he wa they, expect <laughs> just, they expect people to be like, oh my God, my grandma can't get her arthritis medication because Morrissey is trans taking the money and trans and kids. It's so, I can't, it's so stupid. It's <laughs> oh, I'm trying to contain myself here. Okay, next ad. We're going to move on because if I dwell too much on it, it's going to rot my brain. So more Capito, the demon spawn of Shelly More Capito. Thank you for giving us him. Uh, he decided to insert himself into this conversation with an ad that spreads uh, spreads more hysteria over, of course, made up bullshit about trans people. She trains at 6 a.m. every morning. She spent years working to shave off seconds. She's the captain of her school's team. He's just a mid-pack finisher. But not today. Unfortunately, this competition was over before it even began. Woke left-wing politicians are destroying girls' sports. Thanks to Delegate Moore Capito, girls' sports in West Virginia are protected. Hey, quick question. If the thing you're saying is a problem is actually a problem and is actually definitely happening, why do you literally have to hire actors to pretend like it's happening? I mean, is there not one example of a trans athlete, or in the case of the ad, a cis boy literally joining a girls' sports team and ruining it? I mean, if this is a big problem, then why not show, like, newspaper headlines? And it's because he's full of shit. They're all shadow boxing here, but when it comes to trans people in sports, more Capito is an amateur, right? Because Chris Miller stepped in with an ad that really ups the ante when it comes to trans people in sports. And he not only says that trans people in sports are bad implicitly, but he goes an extra step to portray trans athletes as predators because, of course. I'm Chris Miller. As the father of an 11-year-old girl, you're darn right. I don't want her sharing a locker room with biological males. Protecting the integrity and fairness of girls' sports is common sense. If we expect our kids to tell the truth, we can't let the woke left redefine it. Fairy tales aren't facts. A boy is not a girl. And girls' locker rooms are for girls. I'm Chris Miller, and they'll stay that way when I'm governor. The closer the camera got to him, the more uncomfortable I felt watching that. I feel like he's someone who should probably stay away from locker rooms, even for contrived ads about made-up problems. But I mean, stepping back and thinking about all of these ads that we've seen so far that definitely caused brain damage in all of our heads, I apologize, viewers. The common thread here is that all of these gubernatorial candidates are making shit up about trans people. They're shadow boxing. They're proposing solutions to problems that don't actually exist because they don't actually want to address the real problems facing the people of West Virginia. West Virginia ranks 47th in education, 47th in the economy, 48th in economic opportunity, 50th in infrastructure, and 50th in healthcare. And to make matters worse, one in five people in West Virginia are literally illiterate. It's more than one in five. It's 20.9%. And yet, these candidates, they don't have a coherent set of policies that they're running on to help the people of West Virginia. Chris Miller, for example, doesn't even have a policy page on his campaign website, and the only mention of policies includes vague references to transparency, protecting kids from trans people, because of course, and the Second Amendment. He also attacks Biden for inflation and fentanyl, but offers zero solutions. Now, when it comes to more capito, he also doesn't have an issues page, but he does have two sentences dedicated to some of his priorities. Priorities, but of course, he has the most to say about the big bad trans boogeyman. Now, the only one who has an actual issues page is Morrissey, and it might not be very fleshed out 
but it's something. The fact that these candidates are turning their campaigns into a transphobic race to the bottom is an embarrassment. And it's not embarrassing for trans people. It's embarrassing for them. Trans people aren't the reason why people in West Virginia don't have health care or quality education or can't read. But yet these self-serving politicians are trying to create solutions to problems that don't exist because they don't actually care about the real problems that do exist, that do affect the people of West Virginia. And even if they did know about the problems affecting the people in their state, they wouldn't have the courage to take on their corporate donors who are bleeding their state dry. But I've made all of you suffer so much by listening to these dumbass ads. And now it's time for the good news because the bill that More Capito took credit for that banned trans athletes from school sports, guess what? That was blocked by the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals on grounds that it violates the U.S. Constitution. Furthermore, 20 anti-LGBTQ plus bills, most of which were anti-trans, by the way, all died in West Virginia. Now, that's not to say that they're going to stop cooking up bigoted bullshit against trans people, but it's just nice to acknowledge that they've been taking a lot of L's lately. Now, last but not least, these kinds of bigoted campaigns, they might still be common in red states, but it's going to be a relic of the past very soon. And I say this because they just don't work. And not only that, as Glad explains, candidates who frequently discuss restrictions on transgender youth are creating more opposition than support for their campaigns. 53% of both registered and likely 2024 voters say they oppose a political candidate who speaks frequently about restricting access to health care and participation in sports for transgender youth. Also, voters overwhelmingly believe that decisions about health care and mental health services for transgender youth should be made by parents. 81% of likely 2024 voters, 83% of swing voters, and 73% of Trump voters agree. All categories overwhelmingly agree. Republicans should stop focusing on restricting women's rights and banning medical care for transgender youth and instead focus on addressing inflation, job creation, and health care costs. 94% of LGBTQ voters, 76% of registered voters, 76% of likely 2024 voters, and 82% of swing voters agree. And on top of that, these kinds of campaigns also have a galvanizing effect among LGBTQ plus people. So queer people who typically aren't that interested in politics might actually feel motivated to come out and vote against these politicians who are campaigning against them, which isn't that surprising. So even though the ads that we've seen today from these GOP losers might make you feel depressed, as it did with me when I first saw them, keep in mind that these campaigns are a dying breed because they're just not effective. And the one thing that politicians care more about than their hatred of trans people is their own careers. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, F around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games. Pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Pride.